Use like closed captions at the bottom. How do I turn those off? Turn off <laughs> captions. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, well, we're talking about John Adams today. So, yesterday we finished, we talked about the election of 1796. Who were the two candidates in the election of 1796? Thomas Jefferson and um, not George Washington. No, the one who wins, Ellie. <laughs> well, I don't remember that one. John Adams. <laughs> Good job. John Abby. Adams. Way to go, Abby. What's up tomorrow? Oh, Abby for life. Okay. So, um, we're going to talk about John Adams' presidency a little bit today. Um, and then you have an assignment to do today that is over John Adams. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is the Alien and Sedition Act. So basically, these are a couple of acts released during um, John Adams' presidency that kind of like expanded his powers a little bit and didn't really like go along with what a lot of the other um, government members wanted at the time. So Federalists fear the influence of immigrants, especially the French, and feel they will back the Democratic Republicans. Why would um, like John Adams specifically, why would he not want the French to back the Democratic Republic? Was a Democratic Republican. Tom, not Thomas. Jefferson. Yeah. The other guy. No. Oh, right. oh, wait, that is the other guy. Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Adams is a Federalist. Jefferson is a Democratic Republican. So... The first thing we get is the Alien Act. The Alien Act um, states that a president can deport any non-citizen resident considered dangerous to the peace and safety of the United States. And so, like, the president can deport the person. The president else backing him up. He can just deport that person because he feels like it. Um, that kind of, like, really expands the power beyond what is, like, a, like explicitly stated in the Constitution. So that becomes a big issue. Uh, the Sedition Act states that it is illegal for anyone to say or write anything insulting or false about the government, especially the president. Why would people have a problem with that? Why would they have a problem with making it illegal for somebody to say something insulting about the government? Can you say whatever you want about a member of the government and get in trouble for it? No. No, why not? Why Why do you not get in trouble? Because if you have a freedom of speech. Yep. The First Amendment protects your freedom of speech and the freedom of the press if they wanted to write something about it. So it's the harshest law limiting free speech ever passed in the United States. And the Republicans said the acts violated the Constitution, which it does. So the Alien and Sedition Acts violated the First Amendment, according to the Republicans, the Democratic Republicans. So Madison and Jefferson used state legislators to respond. Jefferson, Jefferson is a big proponent of like um, state rights, like states pushing um, for things. So the Kentucky and Virginia resolution states had the rights to declare laws passed by Congress unconstitutional, which is the nullification. Um, Jefferson, according to Jefferson, the United States are a union which have the power to overrule the federal government. So he thinks that the states, when they come together, the states should be over to, the, sorry, when they come together, the states should be able to like overrule the federal government. If all the states agree on something or if the majority of the states agree on something, then the federal government should have to listen to the states. He also stated that currently the Supreme Court did not have the power to declare laws as unconstitutional. And nowhere in the US Constitution is it stated that states have the right to nullify laws. So this was all a bunch of stuff that like, this was the first time any of these issues were coming up. So they were trying to figure out how to resolve these issues. And you'll read more about these a little bit today. So 
the conflict with France. France up, was upset with the U.S. being neutral in a war between France and Britain. Why would France be upset about the U.S. staying neutral between a war with France and Britain? <laughs> Hmm. What did you say? Why would France be mad that the U.S. decided to stay neutral between France and Britain? I don't know, because they're losing, because they're losing territory or something. Not quite. So, what had France done for the U.S. when we were at war with Britain? I don't know. Okay, was France on the U.S.'s side, Britain's side, or were they neutral? I don't know. Ellie. We, when we were setting were the- Were they on our side? Yeah, they were on our side. They were on this U.S. side. So if France was on our side when we were at war with Britain, what do you think France expects us to do when they're at war with Britain? fight with France yeah be on there but we weren't we were remaining neutral and so they get upset about that and so the U.S. pays long owed debts to British merchants and Britain would pay for seized ships remove troops from Northwest Territory and stop arming Native Americans that's part of the Jay Treaty um, and that comes from John Jay he was a Federalist and so um, that kind of like you know, causes tension between France and the U.S. too, because we are interacting with Britain. We are having some sort of relations with Britain, and they're not happy about that in particular. So then you have the XYZ affair. Adams sends three men to France to discuss relations. France asks for a $10 million loan, and the U.S. refuses, which would cause a two-year naval war with France. So there's like this naval dispute going on for a couple years between the U.S. and France. And all because France asked for a $10 million loan and the U.S. wouldn't give it to them. So I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. And then the assignment today is in our exit ticket. So that's what we need to focus on next.